Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I've gotten a few requests for a tutorial on how I make my Bluetooth connected MIDI instruments and so this is that tutorial. I'm going to keep the actual instrument part of it really basic for this video and instead focus more on the Bluetooth connection aspect. So first of all, what will you need to follow along? We'll be using an ESP32 board. These come in many shapes and sizes, but I'm using the Wemos Lowland 32 Lite. It has battery power and charging, it's breadboard friendly and programmable with the Arduino IDE. That's what I have. But to my understanding, basically any ESP32 will work for this. So what else will you need? Well, normally when I make these instruments, I use the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit version 3 breakout board for the Lowland 32 Lite. I designed this breakout board specifically to be able to connect lots of sensors, both analog and capacitive. Now, the full Click 3 beta kit will be for sale over at ContinuumLab.com very soon. But seeing as no one actually has it yet, apart from me, we'll be doing something simpler, way simpler. I'm talking one breakout board, one button and two potentiometers, kind of simple. So let's get started. We'll be making a minimal instrument on this breadboard. Once we've learned everything we need to make Bluetooth MIDI work, you can use it to make more elaborate instruments using different sensors and so on, just like you would with MIDI over USB. But for now, we'll start with just a button and a potentiometer. The potentiometer will determine pitch and the button will trigger the note. First, of course, we insert the Lowland 32 light into the breadboard and connect the 3.3 volt and ground pins to their respective rails. Then we'll connect the button to pin 13 and connect the other side of it to the ground rail. The potentiometer goes into pin 15 with the other two pins connected to 3 volts and ground. And that's the whole setup. Next, we can open up the Arduino IDE and get started on the code. But first, we have to do two things. We need to install the ESP32 board package for Arduino, and then we'll need a couple of libraries. Don't be scared. This is much easier than it sounds, and we can do the whole thing right here from the Arduino interface. First, make sure you're connected to the internet, as Arduino is going to automatically download some stuff. Then go to Tools, Board, and click on Board Manager. That will open up this window where you can then search for ESP32. Then click install, wait for it to finish installing and close the window. This will give you a whole new section in the boards menu where you can find the ESP32 variant that you're using and select it. I'm using the Lowland 32 Lite. While we're here, make sure to set the upload speed to 115,200 or you'll be getting some error messages later on. Next, we need a couple of libraries to make the MIDI over Bluetooth thing work. This is also really easy. Go to Tools, Manage Libraries and in the new window, you search for something called BLE-MIDI. Click Install. It will tell you that you need the MIDI library it might also mention other dependencies depending on what you have installed already. So just accept everything and that's it. Now let's make some Arduino code. Since we've installed the ESP32 board package, this works just like on any Arduino board. So first we'll include the libraries that we just installed. That looks like this. And then we'll create an instance of the BLE MIDI object, like this which will work fine just like that. But if we want to give it a specific name that will turn up when we make the Bluetooth connection, then we can specify that like this. Next, we can name our pins. I'll put in pot pin for the potentiometer and BTN pin for the button. And we'll tell Arduino where they're connected. Then in setup, we'll make sure to set the pin mode of the button pin to input pull up because we've connected it to ground and then we'll start the MIDI functionality right here by calling MIDI.begin. And now we can finally get on with the main loop. We'll keep it really simple by mapping the range of the analog read of the pot pin to a sensible range of MIDI notes like this. 
and then we'll keep track of the current state of the button like this and we'll simply trigger a new node when it's pressed like this using the MIDI node that we got from our potentiometer. The main send node on function takes three arguments, a MIDI node, a velocity value and a channel. Of course we should also define the variables we're using up here, so just add those. And that's the most basic example. We'll get back to it in a second to add some more functionality, but first let's check if it works. Now I'll be connecting to my Android phone, so the very first thing I do is go to the Play Store and install two pieces of free software. First there's the Synpress FM synthesizer, which is a powerful, easy to use synth app. Now this app can work on its own and will connect to our ESP32 just fine. But the one thing that it doesn't do is show us what device we're connecting to, which can be a problem if we have more than one Bluetooth MIDI instrument active at the same time. So we'll also get this MIDI plus BTLE app, which will help us to see the individual devices and connect to specific ones. So now we can open up MIDI plus BTLE and we'll hit the reset button on our ESP32 and voila, our instrument pops up right here. So just hit connect and now your Bluetooth MIDI connection is complete. Oh yeah, by the way, if this doesn't work, then make sure that your phone has Bluetooth turned on, obviously. Now I think it would be nice if the ESP32 would give us some kind of sign that it was connected or maybe trying to make a connection and we'll take care of that back in the uh, Arduino sketch in a second. But first let's open up the synth and see what we've got. Now keep in mind the synth app needs to be open when the connection is made. So we'll quickly hit the reset button on the ESP32 again and go back to MIDI plus BTLE and re-establish the connection. And now we're in business. Now, if you only have one instrument active in your vicinity, then you can skip the MIDI BTLE app altogether. Just open up Synpress FM, turn on your ESP32, and then go to this menu here and hit Scan Bluetooth Keyboards, and the connection is made. Now, that's cool, but it could be better. Let's head back into the Arduino sketch and improve a couple of things. First, I'll make it so that the current node is switched off if the button is released. We'll do that by putting the analog read inside this section so that MIDI node is only updated on a new button press. And then we'll make a separate function for the button release, which has this node off function inside it, using the MIDI node variable to target the node. Next, I'll add another potentiometer on pin 2, which we'll use to control the velocity of each node. So we'll read that and map the reading to MIDI range like this. I'll make sure to define the variable up here with the rest of them. And now I can update the note on function to include that velocity value. Finally, I want the ESP32 to tell me if it's actually made a Bluetooth connection or if it's trying to connect or what. And we'll do that with the onboard LED. Luckily, the BLE MIDI library has a couple of functions that'll help us do that. First, we'll prepare the onboard LED by putting this in the setup function. Of course, if you're using an external LED, then you can use whatever pin instead of the part about the LED underscore built in. Then we'll set a handle for each case like this. These built-in functions actually both call other functions, which we can name unconnected and undisconnected. And then we'll just put those two functions down here at the end. Now, contrary to what it looks like, this will actually turn the LED on when no connection has been made and off when it connects. This is because the Lowland 32 light LED is connected in an active low configuration between the 3 volt supply and one of the GPIO pins. Anyway, this is what I want. The light is warning me that no connection has been made and telling me to fix it. 
Once I'm connected, the LED turns off. And that's the code completed. Let's try to connect and see how it goes. Excellent! As you can see, we now have a clear sign on the board to tell us if we're connected or not. We can vary the velocity of our notes as well as turn them off when we want. The BLE MIDI library works with all the standard MIDI messages from the standard Arduino MIDI library. So that includes pitch bend, aftertouch, NRPN, SysX and CC messages, of course. You can find the precise format for each type of message in the MIDI library documentation. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. I hope you found this tutorial useful. As I mentioned, I'm using these same techniques to make much more elaborate instruments using the new Click3 Beta prototype board. And there will be more exciting news about that right here on the channel very soon. So take care until then. And I'll see you in the continuum.